fellas what's going on it's your boy ethan hope you're having a great day it's almost golden hour time look at that it's so nice uh you can see we're right outside boston billiard and i know you guys haven't noticed this but if you look at the dates it's been about two and a half weeks since i've last played my last live poker session it's been quite some time and we're back at it we're back home i had to take some time off i've like for the for, for like a while i've just lived breathed and ate and slept poker so I needed, you know, some time off, and because it's been getting really nice here in New England, it's perfect golf weather. And uh, if you want to see some golf content from me, I'm making that on another channel. Uh, I'm gonna be uploading videos soon, but that's besides the point, anyways. So it's our first live session in about two and a half weeks. Probably a little rusty. We're playing a little bit online, but we'll see how it today goes. We're gonna hop in there. We're on the one three and two five list. Hopefully we can play the two five there and uh, mix in some bigger pots because I think you were spoiled from that Maryland live trip. Uh, we got some really big pots back there, but we'll see how the today goes. Hopefully enjoy this one. I'm out. I'm done talking for now. Let's get onto the session. It's been a long break from the poker tables, but we're back here at the 2-5 with a $1,000 max buy-in. We pick up queen 10 of spades in the small blind, second hand dealt in. Action folds to the cutoff who opens the $15, button folds, and well, Let's just start off hot with a 3-bet, we size to $60, starting things off hot. The big blind folds, and the cutoff makes the call for 45 more. We get a warm welcome back to live poker as the flop comes 10-4-10-2 10, clubs. Flopping trips here, things can't get easy enough. I throw out a c-bet of $45, sizing down, and he sadly folds, but we take in the first pot of the day. Second hand here with pocket 8s in the cutoff. I open up the action to $20, we get the button to make the call, and the blinds fold. The flop comes queen, three, five, two clubs, and with only one card over our pair, we throw in that c-bet to $25, trying to get value, trying to protect our eights. This player makes the call. The turn comes another queen, so pretty good card, all things considered, less likely he has trips now. I throw out another bet again for value for $55, and for $55, it's good enough, he makes the call again. The river comes the jack of diamonds, and not that I love this card, but we do still have to assume we're ahead. We can't be afraid of too many jack x's. I decide to check now, as I don't see too much merit in getting value from worse hands. This player checks it back, and when I show my hand, he throws his cards into the muck. Pocket 8s is gonna take it down. We're making this video's title come true here with king queen of clubs on the big blind. There's a cutoff open to 20, and action folds to me again. We're certainly going to 3-bet this one if we 3-bet queen 10 of spades. So we size to 80. The cutoff makes the call for 60 more. And now this time the flop comes 10, 3, 4, 2 spades. Having totally whiffed this flop here, and when I look at this cutoff player, it looks like he doesn't want to fold. So certainly can see bet this, but with king high, I'm going to check here and slow down. This player throws out $100 pretty quickly, and... We're going to play it serenely and let this one go. Um, can't fight for every single pot, and this time we let him have it. This hand, ace-5 off on the big blind. Action folds to the button, who opens to $20. This is a solid 2-5 player here and also watches the vlog, so shout out to Seeking Balance if you're in the comments section here. Uh, the small blind folds, and onto me, ace-5 off. I think I can go either way, but obviously we are 3-bet happy. We decide to size up to $80, and this button player makes the call, so... Heads up, the flop comes queen, six, deuce, two hearts, and a diamond. Um, not much to do here, honestly. Not much going on. Just trying to see about this one on a relatively dry board texture. I size the $60, and this player makes a call. The turn now comes the king of diamonds. So although we still have ace high and pretty much nothing, it is another good card to barrel on, as I certainly have all the ace kings in the world three betting. So I decide to fire again, just being ultra aggressive. I size to $175. This player thinks uh, not too long though before making the call with about 450-ish dollars behind. We have no real draws. We have really no plan besides ripping all in on any single river. So that's the only way we can win it. The river comes the three of clubs, another fairly inconsequential board. I guess the only thing we can say is that we block for five, but that isn't really gonna matter too much. Let's just commit to this hyper aggression here and just pray he has a hand that he can fold. I rip it all in and quickly we see a decision. He snap calls it. That's not great for us. We show our ace high, laugh it off because clearly we've got nothing. And this player shows us king queen of hearts. So nice hand, sir. This was uh, quite the donation. Thanks for watching the vlogs. Sometimes you get rewarded for that. 
We're certainly rusty in the live poker game, but certainly not rusty in the punt department. So we reload back to 1,000, and this hand, 10-9 of clubs in the big blind. We get the plus one open to $15, and when action folds to me, you certainly know I am not going to flat. I size up and 3-bet this one to $60, and plus one player makes the call. We go heads up to a flop, which comes jack 7 8 rainbow. Yeah, that's right. We flop the straights, and now, after bluffing off our whole stack with ace high, can we just get value here? I see bet $40 like I normally would on all boards, and this player makes the call for 40 so that's great. The turn, I thought it couldn't get much better, but the turn comes the ace of clubs now, so we've improved to the flush draw along with our straight. Still with the nuts, I'm certainly going to bet again. I don't really love it, as all Jack X holdings hate this ace. Anyways, I sized the $115, hoping he can be sticky, hoping he can have two pair. But sadly, he thinks and uh, ultimately makes the fold, so not winning much with our flopped straight. Hand after that, pocket eights once again, this time in the small blinds. We've three bet almost five times in a row that was caught off camera and got straight folds, so uh, let's just try it again here. The hijack opens to $20, action folds to me in the small blind, I 3-bet to $80 for X. I can go either way with a call or 3-bet, this time just wanted to 3-bet, and uh, this hijack player makes the call. Going to a flop, which comes ace, jack, 10, two spades. This, this just might be the worst flop imaginable, but sometimes I think I can rep this, given that I do have all the stronger hands in range as the 3-better. So I try it out with pocket eights and under pair. I bet out $60 trying to bluff at this one as a little teaser bet. This player doesn't think 60 is enough for a fold. He makes the call, which I don't love at all. Going to a turn, which comes the 10 of spades. Um, I don't really love this. And obviously spade draw gets there. Any 10x holdings improves to trips. Uh, I'm going to give up here at this point and check. This player decides on a check back. The river is the seven of clubs, and given the line I've taken, is there any way I can turn this into a profitable bluff? I know I can't be good here with pocket eights, but I also think that any ace isn't going to fold to a river bet, given I did just show off that ace five punt. So I don't know. I check. I don't think anyone would fold a reasonable ace anyways, so I check. This player checks back with king jack. Pair jacks is going to be good enough to take it down. So far, early on, it doesn't seem like we're too good at navigating boards properly when to check or bluff. In this next hand, the table's been pretty quiet. Seems like I'm the only fish donking off money. So I look down at seven deuce off in the cutoff, seen a lot of folds, seen a lot of walks. I raise it up to $20 and I'm not surprised. Everyone folds, so we've got to show it. Can we please liven up this table somehow? I certainly can't be the only person that hates money, right? Here in this next hand, we're getting splashy. 10-8 of clubs under the gun, and I decided that this was a good enough hand to open. Why? Who knows? I raise it up to $20, action folds to the button, who 3-bets to 60. The blinds fold to me now, and uh, looks like we're going to play another 3-bet pot. Uh, folding is boring, so i um, certainly going to be just making the call. Uh, it's definitely a strong indication he has a good hand, because he did 3-bet me as the under the gun raiser. So this is a hand that he'll just never expect that I have in range. Anyways, the flop comes four, five, seven, two spades, and a club. So, all things considered, not a bad board for my exact holding. Uh, so when I check, he throws out a bet of seventy-five dollars, and I'm in a hyper aggressive and bluff happy mood if I see a good runout. I decide on a call for seventy-five. Let's see a turn. The turn comes the nine of spades. So certainly one of the good cards I'd like to start bluffing on. Um, when the spade draw gets there, we also are open-ended. I decided to donk out $125. This player thinks for a while and looks fairly uncomfortable at the situation. He looks like he wants to fold, but ultimately makes the call for 125 So let's try to see what happens on the river and we'll see what develops. We'll certainly have to bet larger to get him off his holding. The river comes the ace of diamonds. So it's a really polarizing card as obviously if he had like ace king with one spade, then... I'm obviously lighting money on fire if I were to throw it a bet here, but I don't think we can bitch out now, given this line. I have no real explanation as to why I keep bluffing, but I throw out a bet of $325. I really need this one to get through. This player folds, saying he had pocket jacks, so it's nice to win this one with 10 high, taking a very ambitious, bluffy line. 
I just got lucky given the runouts and he had the exact holding that we could have folded out here. So we'll take it down. Next hand in, same theme guys. It was gonna be a lot of raising preflop. Ace queen of diamonds on the cutoff playing five handed. I open up the action at $20 and immediately the button three bets to 75. Action folds to me and this player literally just sat at the table a hand ago and he started with around $500 in stack. And given this configuration, cutoff, open, button, three bets, he certainly can be three betting fairly light, and this hand plays fairly well in a four bet pot. So I'm going to lean towards a four bet in this one. We size up to $250. This player thinks for a little bit and ends up ripping it all in. His stack is a total of 457 Obviously, we're never folding for 207 more. We make the call, and let's just go to a runout. The run out comes and all we've got is ace high. So since he jammed first, he shows his cards, which is ace queen off suit. We chop it up in a very friendly, anticlimactic result, but nice hand, Tom. Nice to make us sweat this one out. For the third time this session, lovely pocket eights once again. Don't fail me now this time. We're back in the small blind and there's a button open to 25. I've seen this player call a bet with 7-4 off suit, the hand right before this. So when he opens it up, we're certainly going to 3-bet this one, and I size to $100 given his open. The big blind folds, and this button player makes the call. The flop comes 9-6-4, 2 hearts, and when I'm first to act, I think it's an okay board for us to bet. So I size to $95, a little bit bigger than what I wanted to, but it's fine. Misclicks happen, I guess. This player thinks and makes the call for 95, so we're going to see a turn. The turn comes the Jack of Hearts, uh, another card over our pair. Don't love it, but we do have the 8 high flush draw now, I guess. Anyways, uh, I check, not loving this card. This player checks it back. The river now comes the King of Hearts, which is all things considered pretty good as we do improve to our flush. Um, now, I think we have an easy check call spot. We're going to have to defend our flush a lot of the time, so I check. He checks it back, which is nice. We show our eight high flush, pocket eights, and it's good enough to take down the pot. So always nice to see that. In this very next hand, we play against the same player again. We pick up six four of clubs on the button and the cutoff player to my right opens it up to 20 again. Uh, we're playing five handed in this spot. And when I see someone that might be opening up a little too wide, let's try to take advantage of that and three bet to 80. <laughs> We're three betting at six, four of clubs in position. Why not? The blinds fold around back to the cutoff player and he decides on a call, which I pretty much expected him to defend all the time. The flop comes seven, five, four, two diamonds and a club. So a great flop for us with bottom pair, open-ended and backdoor flush draws. When he checks to me, I throw out a bet of $75. This player folds, but just want to include this one here because it's pretty fun. When you three bet six, four of clubs and you see a great flop like that, it's always nice to report it and take it down. So wrapping up the session, we, we came out real hot, just three betting, four betting, everyone immediately. I feel like every single hand we played was like not a normal raised pot. It was always either a three or four bet pot, but uh, yeah, it, our hyper aggressiveness worked sometimes didn't work in the biggest pot we played but we were in the game for eighteen hundred dollars up for fifteen fifteen so a little bit of an l that we could have bounced back from if we played a little bit longer i think but we've got two really exciting announcements here if you stuck to the end of this video so number one i'm going to austin at the lodge and playing on their stream their one three and five five stream on may 12th and may 16th so if you're around austin and around texas i'll be there as well but you can also tune in on youtube to see their stream on those dates it'll be a really fun time so if anyone's around the area you want to mix in some cash uh, that day I'll be around the area and it'll be a good time secondly I am co-hosting a meetup game here at Boston Billiard on Memorial Day weekend it's a two-day event on May 30th and May 31st May 30th there's a cash game going on myself and Johnny Vibes gonna be in town so it'll be the both of us running the uh, cash games it'll be going on from somewhere between 6 to 11 p.m. so it'll be around five hours and we'll be circulating and playing the cash games so that'll be a good time. And secondly, on May 31st, it is going to be a $250 tournament and pre-registration is open now because there's only 108 players that are capped for the buy-in of this tournament. 
and it's a bounty one, so there's gonna be a $250 bounty on myself and Vibes if you knock us out. So that'll be a good time, a little two day Memorial Day trip here at Boston, it'll be a good time. So yeah, if you're around Austin, I'll be around those dates. If you're around here in New Hampshire or Mass or New England, myself and Vibes will be around as well. So hopefully I get to meet a bunch of you guys at those dates up in the lodge and here at Boston Billiard and uh, it'll be a fun time. So got some exciting stuff planned, a lot of exciting content as well. I'm going to the WPT in Florida soon. So those vlogs will be a lot of fun. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. See you guys at those dates. See you guys on the next video. Peace.